Hi right, guys, what we're trying to do today is we want to see how much suspension travel it'll get with all the sway bars connected, tires at factory settings. We got 16 pounds in the front, 22 in the rear. When I measure under this tire right here, I get 12 and a half inches to that tire tread. This block is just sitting here. Yeah, it's not attached. That was just so I didn't have to jack that uh, come along there so high. I went up until this tire just tried to leave the ground. Yeah, I can turn that. I can push on the machine and lift that thing off the ground real easy. All right. So I'm going to lower that, pull the thing forward, try it on the back, see what it does. And then I want to unhook the sway bars and try them. I'm now doing the back tire. It's kind of disappointing. This is only 12 and 3 quarter to right there. Same thing. Went up. I actually went until this tire left the ground. And then went down the clip till it touched. So, you don't even get 12 inches of twist out of that. You got 14 inches of travel at every corner. But those sway bars are holding you back that much. So, that's very interesting. I, you know, I had the back sway bar off once when that bolt down there broke. Um, I could tell a little difference in the ride. And here's what the front looks like. It's got a little bit of a twist in it. That side there is being pushed up a little bit. But, yeah, it really limits it. All right. I'm going to unhook some sway bars. Okay. The only thing I've changed is the rear sway bar is disconnected. Now I have 15 and a quarter inches to right there. Same thing, went up till that tire came off the ground, put it back down till it touched. So that's, what was that? That's, that was 10 and three quarter, I believe. I'll double check the math in the video. Um, and uh, that's quite an improvement with just the rear disconnected. Now you got all the weight back here. I don't know if I'd want to have the rear and the front disconnected, but the rear is real easy to do. Um, so, we'll see. I'm going to drop this thing down now, back it back up, raise the front, see if I get how much more I get out of the front with the rear disconnected. Then I'm going to drop that, then I'm going to disconnect the front one, try it again, and see what we get. That would be all four disconnected. Okay, there's the front corner up 16 and 3 8 to the bottom of the tread right there. Rear sway bar disconnected. See it right there. Make sure it's not hitting over here. Okay, you know, it's not hitting anything. Okay, right, rear sway bar disconnected, front sway bar still connected. Now I got that much travel. All right, we'll drop it down and unhook the front. Okay, so now that's all four corners disconnected. I got 21 and 5 eighths to this part of the tread, just like I've been doing on everything else. All sway bars disconnected. I went up that tire right there and that tire back there we're trying to come off the ground at the same time so see this doesn't roll and this one over here doesn't roll so that's pretty cool difference in all the numbers so i don't have very good light back here there's still some room for that to compress And I think there's room for that to go down a little. No, no, that's fully extended because it was coming off the ground. 
and then looking at it from the front there's what the front arms look like so that would be this one fully extended because it was trying to come off the ground and this one here uh, see if I can see Ooh, right down in there uh, here's a light <clears throat> this is almost to the bump stop I think you can see right there in that bump stop it's not quite there so that could go down just a little bit more well I should say up that can compress just a hair more than that so there you go all tires at recommended pressures which I usually run them lower um, and you get over 21 inches on that front corner all the other tires are still on the ground now let's see how stable is it it's probably pretty tippy yeah that's not too bad though okay so here's the last one that i'm trying so the rear is reconnected the front sway bars are disconnected now i have 16 and three quarter at this spot like i've done all along this tire wanted to come off the ground and this tire here was still still planted so let's see I'm going like, yeah so how much twist do we have there in the front suspension pretty decent twist is there room in this bump stop still? Well, that's just a hair closer than it was last time. So that means there's more resistance. That one's all obviously full extended. And how much twist have we got in the rear suspension? Really don't look like a whole lot of twist. So just having that rear sway bar it takes away that much. But if you saw my video of uh, Thompson Reservoir riding and I had pulled up on a rock that's probably about the height real close anyway to how high that rock was and my rear end was way off the ground now you gotta remember I think I might have already mentioned this but I usually run a lower air pressure and in a real world situation you know that tire would be squished a little more because I'd have something on it and this tire would be squished a little more so you could probably drive over something that was a little bit higher than that and all the other tires stay on the ground but that's pretty cool that means you can go over in this configuration you can go over a rock that's 16 and a half inches or 16 and 3 eighths to be exact <laughs> but the tire will squish the 16 and a half inch tall rock on this corner and everything else is still going to be touching the ground on flat ground so that definitely makes a difference having that front sway bar off it'll be interesting to see how it handles i'll have to play with this a little bit and figure out how you get this out of that hole i don't know if it's real simple or a pain in the butt but uh We'll find that out later. Okay, so there's my articulation test without using an RTA ramp. And uh, I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.